Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we are going to discuss about vector error correction model in EVUs. I will try to explain this concept with the help of this images. In childhood, we used to play three legged race where two children were tied with one band and they have to run in the designated tracks. Now, in our uh, finance and economics also, we are having two variables, variable 1 and variable 2. They may be moving, uh, they are strongly associated with each other. So, there is a band which is tied and therefore this band is technically known as co-integration. Now, if there are more than two children, how many bands you require? We require two bands. So the number of co-integration, this co-integration vectors are two. Now let us try to understand this concept with the help of the technical words. When we are having more than two variables, I have already given you the explanation of the two children, then there is a possibility of having more than one co-integrating vector. In general, for n number of variables, we can have up to n minus 1 co-integrating vector. Therefore, when n is equal to 2, which is the simplest case, we can understand that the co-integration vector is only 1. 2 children, 1 co-integration, 1 band. If there are more than 2, assuming that there is only one co-integrating relationship, it is a very serious problem that cannot be resolved by angel grangel single equation approach. And therefore, an alternative to angel grangel approach is needed and this is known as a Johnson approach for multiple equations. So, it means that if the two series are co-integrated, then they share a common stochastic trend and will grow proportionally. In other words, they move together in long run or they have a long run relationship. So, if the variables are co-integrated, we can specify the error correction model. Now, what is this? Let's try to understand again from this concept only that suppose this child is moving out of the tracks immediately there will be a correction which will be there from this child that you are moving out of the tracks please come inside and therefore this correction is negatively imposed now it can happen vice versa also that this child is moving out of the tracks and therefore the correction should happen from this side this child will pull, pull this this to a child so that they can come back on the tracks so this is the correction which is happening similarly in our series also if this if the one series starts deviating then there is a correction which is coming from the another series so this is what is error correction model this one so if the variables are found to be co-integrated we can specify the error correction model Co-integration indicates that the causality exists between two series, but it fails to show the direction of causal relationship. Angel and Grangel suggested that if there exists a long-run relationship, there must be either unidirectional or bidirectional Granger causality between the series. According to the Granger, if there is an evidence of co-integration between two or more variables, then valid error correction model should exist between these two variables. Let's try to understand by two series, which is GDP and inflation. We know that in any country, these two series are co-integrated. Steps of Johansson approach. The first step is that we have to check that all the variables are integrated of the same order or not, then only we can proceed for the co-integration test, the basic assumption. The second is, we will have to determine the appropriate lag length for the model. The appropriate lag length for the model can be, uh, can be decided on the basis of a KIK information criterion or a squads based criterion. Step three, choosing the appropriate model regarding the deterministic components in the multivariate system. This we will explain. So in vector error correction model, it restricts the long run behavior of the endogenous variable to converge to their co-integrating relationship. Remember one thing, VECM is a restricted form of the war. We are, we are, we want that this endogenous variable should converge to their co-integrating relationships while allowing for the short run adjustments. 
let us try to go back here. Now, this students must be running the race and there will be multiple times that they must be moving out and the correction is happening. So there will be multiple occasions where the correction is needed and these are all short run adjustments needed for establishing a long run relationship. So it is a restricted war designed for use with non-stationary series that are known to be co-integrated. The co-integrating term is known as error correction since the deviation from the long run is corrected gradually through a series of partial short run adjustments. I told you that, that there is a correction which is happening from one, one child to another and they want to win the race and they want to have a long run relationship. That's the whole concept. Now how to carry out this in eViews? Let's try to understand. I'm having a series LGDP, LM2, LNR. Normally, you should do the log transformation of the data so that you can handle the heteroscedacity which may be there in the data. So, how can you generate the log transform series? You have to simply write down generate LGDP, log of any series. We are doing here at log GDP and enter, and a new series will be generated. I have already uh, I'm already having a log transform series. Now, first thing which you should do is test the stationarity of this series 1, 2 and 3. It is necessary that this series should be stationary or they should be integrated of the same order. The stationarity in this series can be tested with the help of unit root testing and the correlogram. Kindly refer to my previous videos that how to do the unit root testing and correlogram. Now the next thing is to determine the optimal lag length which is there. So I'll go in open and you can see the series from here. Now I want to run. I want to estimate the optimal lag length. So I'll go in est estimate war and I'll write down here LGDP P. Remember one thing, we are not running uh, vector auto regressive model right now. We are just trying to estimate the optimal lag length click OK and therefore it is necessary to go in the environment of var that is VAR var view leg structure leg length criteria click OK. Now you can see here that it has given me the output. There are some legs, seven legs which are suggested by the system. One leg according to the squats criterion, two leg according to the hand and, hand and queen criterion. That is the asterisk. Uh, you can see the asterisk on the values, which suggests that this is the optimal leg. You should not go beyond more than two legs because increasing too many legs in your model will increase. Will in, there are there are high chances that the multicollinearity will increase which will result into insignificant coefficients. Now you will have to carry out the same same analysis for other variables also. I'll click here. Again, you will have to go in quick estimate war and you'll have to determine for LM2, B and R. Basically, you will have to run the optimal lag length for all the variables which are there in the model. After, after this, you can copy this output in Word file and you can write down the first output is that the optimal lag for GDP is 1 according to the squats criterion. Similarly, another two variables are also to be included here. Now, we want to find out that how many co-integrating vectors are there. As we are having two variables, uh, sorry, three variables, there are, there are chances that there can be more than one co-integrating vector. You can open as group, you can go in view and activate the co-integration test that is Johansson system co-integration test. Normally, we select the third one which is intercept no trend in co-integration equation and testing for war. You can change the lag from here. I'll keep one lag to keep the model simple. Click OK you got the output. Now you can copy this output 
Control A, copy, and you can take this output in the Word file. How to interpret this output? This is a null hypothesis. There is no co-integrating equation. This is a p-value. This is also null. This is also null. Now, if this p-value is less than 0 0.05, right? So I'll if this p-value is less than 0 0.05, we are rejecting the null. It means that we will have to go for the second one. And we'll have to see the p-value here also. So your null is at the most there is one co-integrating equation. So here p-value is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, we fail to reject null. Don't get confused. I have written all the possibility which can happen. The first possibility, the first null, none. Okay, this one, none. Its p-value is more than 0 0.05, this value. Okay, it's more than 0 0.05. You have to stop here only. There is no co-integrating equation. The second possibility, that the p-value is less than 0 0.05 and in, in second case, it is at the most one, this one, our possibility. So there are very strong chances that there is at least one co-integrating equation. The third possibility, where this is less than 0 0.05, this is also less than 0 0.05, but this is more than 0 0.05. Can you guess how many number of co-integrating equations can be there? Yes, there can be. There is at least two co-integrating equations. Once we have established this thing, you can copy this output here and you can proceed further specifying that there is at least on the basis of trace statistics and maximum eigenvalue number of co-integrating equations are one so you will get the same result from trace statistics and maximum eigenvalue in case of differences you have to rely more on maximum eigenvalue but most of the time they tally with each other see p value less than 0 0.05 more than more than less than more than more than now, how to run vector error correction model in EVMs? We'll minimize this. Right click, open as var. Remember, it is var, vector error correction model is a restricted form of var. So, click here, go in co integrations, specify one. Either you can specify one or two. For the sake of simplicity, keep it one. Now, I am saying LGDP is my dependent variable, LM2, P, and R are independent variable. I'll specify lag as 1, enter. I got the answer. Now, you have to understand this, that this is a co-integrating equation which is there. Now, here, you have to reverse the signs, and the interpretation will be on that basis. So, here, if your sign is negative, your interpretation is positive. Here the sign is positive, your interpretation will be negative. So in case of normalized co-integrating coefficient, signs are to be re reversed. Here the signs are to be reversed. In the long run, LM2 has a positive effect, this one, on LGDPP because it is a dependent variable and R has got the negative effect on LGDPP. Are they significant or not? That will be evaluated on the basis of this and this. Basically, we get this value when the coefficients are divided by standard error, we get this value. Similarly, here also. Now, if these values are more than plus or minus 1.96, these coefficients are significant. Now, let me write down this equation. Remember this, this is 1 minus 0 0.412 into LM2, 0 0.03 into R, and this is constant. When I'll take this into... Just a minute. Yeah. So we will be developing a Johnson long run equation from the model. 1 LGDP P minus 2.085 is a constant plus 0 0.035 into R minus 1 minus 0 0.412 LM2 P is equal to 0. You can see here this one. I have written on, the, on this basis everything equal to 0. 
Now we will change the size and we will make LGDB as the dependent variable. So you can see here R has got the negative impact on LGDP, LM2 has got the positive impact. Remember all the signs should match with the established theories. If there is any problem in the signs, kindly refer to your, to your model, to your functional form of the model or the variables which you have omitted. In case of omission of the variables or in case of wrong functional form of the equation, there can be a signs which don't tell you with the theory. Now we will have to interpret this thing on the basis of this output, right, on the basis of this output. So I have written down this equation here, same output I have taken here, same output. Now here, the most desirable thing is this one. The signs of the co-integrating equation should be negative. Why? Just try to recall my lecture this one that in case if the child is moving out immediately there should be a if this child is moving out therefore there should be a correction which would be which should be happening it is error correction and therefore there should be a negative immediate negative shock should be given so that the correction is there let us come back here okay so the there are two desirable things. One is this sign should be negative. Another thing, it should be more than plus or minus 1.96. So lambda is the speed of the adjustment and these are all short run parameters. So when we consider LGDP as a dependent variable, we can form the equation as LGDP P 0 0.02. This is minus 0 0.02, which is desirable in co-integration equation, which is error correction term minus one plus 0 0.065 the LGDP minus 0 0.032 LM2P, it is first difference, 0 0.00 DRT minus 1 plus constant. The coefficient of the error correction term is minus 0 0.02. This means that the deviation from the log run is corrected at the rate of 2% in present period. 2% is quite small amount. It should be reasonably above 20%. Now, we will have to carry out some causality test in this mod. Suppose there are two variables, yt and xt, which may affect each other with the distributed lags. The, the relationship can be captured with the help of var or restricted var. So, yt causes xt, xt causes yt. These are all bi-directional feedback. The two variables may be independent of each other. So, four conditions can be there. yt to xt, xt to yt. Both are affecting each other or both are independent of each other. So it is necessary that both are stationary if we want to apply Granger causality test. Basic conditions in the causality, series must be stationary, integrated of the same order. They are very sensitive to the number of like terms included in the model. Error terms entered in the causality test are un uncorrelated. Although co-integration indicates the presence of co causality test at least in one direction, it does not indicate, indicate the direction of causality between the variables. And for this purpose, we will have to carry out various causality tests. Let us see how we can do this in EVUs. Now, the first thing which you have to do is proc mix system order by variable and you will get the equation. Now, you can simply press this estimate. It will ask that which method you want to ordinary list square or other methods. Click OK. You will get the answer. Same thing. Now you can copy this. Control A, copy, and you can take it into the Word file. Now you will have to see this first value. It should be negative. And here, these are the p values. So C1 means the error co coefficient. It is one period lag residual between L LGDP, LM2P, and R. Here C1 is negative and the p-value is less than 0 0.05, which means that there is a presence of long-run causality from LM to P and R to LGDP. So here C1 means the speed of adjustment of any equilibrium towards a long-run equilibrium. So the correction is happening at the rate of 2.3%. Similarly, C1, C9, just C, C1. 
then similarly if you see in this one where lm2p has been made dependent variable this one so c6 is the error correction term and here c11 is the error correction term so let us check is it negative yes it is negative less than 0 0.05 yes similarly here also it is negative and p value is less than 0 0.05 now let us talk about the other terms so c2 to c5 here c2 to c5 c5 is a constant all other are coefficients of short run causal effects c2 to c4 are the coefficients of short run causal effects remember the presence of so strong causal relationship can only be concluded if the t statistics is significant this we can conclude here from p value so you can write down here as the p value is less than 0 0.05 error correct terms is significant but short run causal effects p value is more than 0 0.05 and the short run causal effects are not significant now the second way to test the causality is again you go in view leg structure Granger causality and you will get the answer again you can copy this result copy in the word file now the null hypothesis of this is lm2p this one lm2p does not granger cause uh, does not granger cause lgdpp alternative is it causes we'll have to see the p value of this so this is insignificant insignificant ins this is significant so we can say that that the p value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis this means that r has short run causal effect on lm2p short run causal effect is present so this is second causality test now the third way in which we can carry out the causality test is estimate group statistics granger causality test keep as it is click ok click ok you will get the answer again you can copy this result in your word file copy and take it to the word now here the null hypothesis is r does not granger cause lm2p the first one the alternative is r does granger cause lm2p remember both of them are null now you have to see the p value here as the p value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis this means that r does granger cause lm2p now we will have to select we will have to make our model from general to specific how we can do we will only select those terms whose p value is less than 0 0.05 and we will include only those, those terms which are there in the model so from c1 to c5 those terms which are which are having the p value less than 0 0.05 will be included in the model so that we can create a parsimonious model rather than over parameterized model now we will have to carry out some residual analysis so for this we will go in view residual test autocorrelation lm test next to include uh, let us keep it to click ok and you will have to see the p value of this so you can see as a p value is more than 0 0.05 at all lags so serial correlation is not present the next thing which we have to carry out is residual uh, normality test so for this i'll go in residual normality test we will use the cholesky of covariance lutecopol click ok so you can see here as a p value of uh, the second component here so this first component is for lm2 second component is for r and the third component is for lgdp you can see here that the p value is less than 0 0.05 for the second component it means that the residuals of r second component are not normally distributed while the residuals of first and third component which is lm2p and lgdp p are normally distributed moreover you will have to also see the overall p value and here as it is less than 0 0.05 we can say that the residuals are not normally distributed in this war system now we will carry out the heteroscedasticity test for this again i'll go in view residual test heteroscedasticity no cross terms click ok i got the p value 
So here, as the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reach, so we reject null hypothesis that residuals are homoscedastic. Here, residuals are heteroscedastic. So in econometrics and other applications of multivariate time series analysis, a variance decomposition or a forecast error variance de decomposition is used to aid in the interpretation of vector autoregressive model once it has been fitted. The variance decomposition indicates the amount of information each variable contributes to the other variables in the autoregression. It determines how much of the forecast error variance of each of the variables can be explained by the exogenous source of other variables. For this, again, we'll go back in the environment of e-views. You can click from here, view, variance decomposition. It will ask me that in what chronology you want to test it. I can specify this thing and keep the feed periods as five period. I can get the table or multiple graphs, keep it table. I'll get the answer. Now, basically, what have what you have to interpret here is this is a dependent variable. Now, in the first lag period, the entire variance of LM2P is explained by its own lag. Got it? See, the summation in the row will always be 100%. The summation in the row will always be 100%, right? Now, in the second lag, 91% is explained by its own lag. 6.9% is coming from R and 1.3% is coming from LJDP. Quite insignificant. When you move lower to the fifth lag, 9% is coming from R LG and 2% is coming from LJDP. So it's quite insignificant. But when I talk about R, the 16% is coming from fifth lag and very less is coming from LGDPP. If I talk about LGDPP, 14% is coming from LM2P in the fifth lag and quite insignificant is coming from 0.90. We can further confirm this by running uh, variance decomposition, multiple graphs, click OK. And you can see here the shocks which are there. For more videos on econometrics, you can see my play playlist, you can subscribe to my channel, you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you.